I wanted to talk oil with you a bit, if I could, to, at the outset, if, uh, and I'm sure Boone would uh, approve. Um, you know, we're talking these days about potentially getting to what? A narrative of, let's call it, 15 plus million barrels per day of U.S. supply. Is, in your opinion, as one of the pioneers of this industry, certainly in terms of, um, uh, of shale and fracking, do you think that's possible? I do. Uh, you know, the growth uh, projectile has slowed down uh, the last year, uh, which it needed to. Uh, we were oversupplying the market, so one thing you can't do is get ahead of the market. Uh, you know, we want to meet demand, uh, but you know, getting ahead of it is not a good thing, and we've seen the results of that. And so, you know, the uh, uh, public market uh, has told us that that's not what they're going to pay for. It's a lot of growth we don't need. And so, you know, uh, uh, oil companies have uh, readjusted uh, the percentage of growth that they have in the companies, and, and we certainly have at Continental as well. And uh, we intend to meet demand, and, uh, but not exceed it. So anyway, that's, uh, that's where it's at. So can we get to those numbers in the future? Uh, we've got a, a great deal of oil here in America, thank, thank goodness. And, uh, you know, it's, it's possible we can get to 15, 16 million barrels a day eventually. Are, are, are well efficiencies on the oil side still increasing, or have they hard started to level off, or if not even, start to decline? You know, we're not close to uh, decline on uh, EUR increases. Uh, you know, maybe we're getting toward the top of the learning curve uh, on, on in individual wells. Uh, you know, the... Uh, the Bakken is still growing. Uh, the Permian, that's, uh, that's the biggest growth. The Eagle Ford is still growing a little bit, so uh, we're, we're getting to the top of that curve maybe, but uh, there's still, still a lot of uh, room for growth here in America's oil fields. Yeah. Well, the companies themselves and the stocks, and we're taking a look at uh, what we have been at Continental Resources as well, have not done particularly well of late. There's continued concern about the ability of the industry to refinance what is, what, over $100 billion worth of debt that's coming due over the next three years. Is that a justified concern? I don't, uh, I don't believe uh, it is on a, on a macro scale. Uh, companies are, are able to handle the debt that they have. We certainly are here at Continental, and we've been paying down debt, uh, you know, the first six months of this year, uh, our earnings, uh, about 500 million uh, excess uh, free cash flow. And so uh, we're, we're applying that where it needs to be, uh, both with stock buybacks and debt re reduction. So most companies are able to handle it like Continental is. You know, Harold, if we can move to T. Boone Pickens and sharing some sort of memories of what he did for the world of business and energy. Of course, he was quite a character, and we've been talking a lot about personal stories and memories, but he did an awful lot for the energy world, particularly recently in natural gas. What do you think his biggest legacy will be? Well, uh, obviously, it's one of the reasons that I, I uh, got in this business to start with. And that is the uh, generosity of people within oil and gas. And Boone Pickens exemplifies that as much as anybody. Uh, he was somebody that made money, uh, made big money, and, and gave back. Uh, Boone's a great Oklahoman. Uh, I enjoyed my time with him. I went out uh, just last year and sat down and had dinner with him one evening. And he and I talked about, you know, our career and what it meant to us, and, uh, and also uh, just fun stuff, hunting and uh, all those things we enjoyed so much. And uh, I'll miss Boone. He, uh, as I said, was a, a great Oklahoman. Uh, you know, he's, he created a, a, a legacy and extended a, a legacy of generosity within our industry, and, and that's certainly important. Uh, yes, he was... Uh, uh, Maverick, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, corporate raider, uh, made a lot of money, uh, forced companies to uh, achieve greater efficiencies, uh, you know, at, at a certain time. And, uh, and then, of course, he, he was a commodity trader deluxe. 
What are your thoughts, Harold, when it comes to uh, what's going on right now with U.S. policy and trade with China and the impact on the broader energy patch? I mean, certainly that's an area that we need to focus on and pay attention to the policy changes as we get these headlines this morning that perhaps there may be some kind of a potential rollback or some kind of a resolution. I think a resolution will happen. Uh, I think we just need to make sure that we're concentrating just on trade and, and don't try to correct all the social issues in China. Uh, you know, they're, uh, they're their own com country and they're going to do things their way. So, uh, you know, getting over to intellectual property and all those sorts of things, maybe we just need to stay exactly on track with trade. and. Uh, you know, in our industry, we're patriots. We're not out there uh, complaining and whining uh, about what's going on. We'd like to see it corrected sooner than later. And the administration is working uh, very hard to make it happen. And I believe it will happen. And uh, it'll be good for uh, basically world trade uh, as it occurs. So you have to remove the roadblocks. And uh, this administration is doing exactly that. Uh, Mr. Ham, always appreciate you taking some time for us. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Harold Ham, Chairman and CEO of Continental Resources. As we remember, T. Boone Pickens passing away at the age of 91. We'll be right back.